So now that all our solar panels are installed, I need to run wiring from up on the roof to down below the sink. So the first step is going to be to take out this microwave, see what's behind it, and see if there's a good spot for me to run that wire. So here's what it looks like. And it looks like there's already a hole up to the roof, so that's promising. So Mel has requested that all of the wires for the solar are hidden, which makes sense. So right now I'm trying to pry this little side piece out, see if I can run the wire behind that. There appear to be some kind of nails or something, maybe nailed in from in behind the fridge. All right, that wasn't too bad. So I'm gonna try and measure out this existing hole so I can drill down from the roof and hopefully be pretty close. Eight inches. And then from the side, nine. I'm just prepping for the scariest part of running this wiring. And that is drilling a hole through the top of the trailer down into the trailer scary stuff. You can see I've got the drill, drill bits, some Dicor lap sealant. That's going to be for when I put the waterproof cover on top of it. And I've got the cables of course too. So yeah, we're ready. Okay, so here we go. Moment of truth. He's going to drill through the roof now. Right behind me. Right there is where the drill is hopefully going to come through. I see daylight! Oh, I can see the hole right through! Alright, I'm gonna put the wire down now. Okay. Yeah, you're good, it's in! So we finished the scariest part of the wiring installation without incident. Now we've got wires running down into the trailer. Before we lose the sun behind the trees, I'd like to do a quick test just to make sure our wire is working. So everything is disconnected in the trailer, so I'm going to plug stuff in up here. We're plugged in. Down in the trailer now, I've got the positive wire on a circuit breaker. So I can switch it on and off, and I'm just going to test out the voltages. What's it reading, dear? 33 watts. And what's it supposed to be reading? 100. So maybe we need to see if, the, if we didn't beat the trees. So I've got one panel hooked up in a temporary fashion. Uh, it's not giving that much power, but I think that might be because it's partially shaded right now. So this panel is only generating about one third of what it should be right now. And I think that's because the sun's already into the trees a little bit and the panel is tilted away from the sun. So the original plan of running the wires down this little section here is not so good. The wires are just too thick and they won't be covered up by this little piece of wood. So we don't really want these wires visible inside the RV. Luckily, there was already some holes up here where the microwave used to be that go into the wall. And I found out that they're actually fairly accessible from outside. Let's go. So you can see here, this is our RV fridge behind and I've managed to feed the wires all the way down the wall out here and then I just have to drill one hole through here to get it underneath the stove. So it's actually less drilling than before and really just a cleaner setup since all the wires run behind the wall. So win-win. Yeah so if you're doing a project like this always kind of look for pre-existing holes and look where the existing wires run and you might be able to find a spot that you can run parallel to. We've got the wires almost exactly where we want them. Now we just need to drill in to get them under the stove. 
With Mel's help, I have drilled two holes. Now I'm gonna feed the wire through to her. Mission complete. Got lots of wires. We have more wire than we could possibly know what to do with. I've got the wires running down into the trailer exactly where I want them. And now I've got them up here. So now I'm ready to finalize and waterproof the entry point. So there's no going back from here. I've seen a lot of online debate about whether tilting the panels is actually worth it. Right now it's about mid-April in southern British Columbia, Canada, and the sun is about 45 degrees right now. And if I tilt the panels 45 degrees towards the sun, I actually double the output. So I think it is actually worth it to have your panels tiltable if you can. One really cool thing about having the solar is we don't have to plug the trailer in anymore. Before we had it, we had to plug in just to keep our battery topped up all the time. But now, it tops itself up from the sun. It's great, and we don't have a cord running through here now. So, added benefit, I didn't even think. Our solar project is 100% complete and working. Yeah, so I have to say I'm just super happy with how it all turned out. It's all Renogy branded stuff. Everything we got worked. I'm really happy with how the charge controller is working now that the solar panel is hooked up. So if you found this video useful, I would really appreciate if you could give us a like. And of course, subscribe and hit that notification bell if you want more tips, trips, and other RV related stuff. Thank you very much for joining me. And in the meantime, keep on living the life you've imagined. And I'm really trying to not destroy any of the wood. <laughs> well, you came through, but not in the hole. How far? About an inch away. That's not bad. You went right through the support beam. Oh, well that's not good. Can you see the wire? Yeah. Wait! Our solar panels are now...